Hello and welcome to GP Notebook TV. My name is Anish Kutech and I'm a GP in South Wales. Today I thought I'd discuss with you the uh, MHRA guidance uh, that has been brought out in January 2024 that tells us about the increased risk of atrial fibrillation in patients with established cardiovascular disease or uh, cardiovascular risk factors uh, that uh, are treated with omega-3 acid um, ethyl esters. Uh, now, as usual, I'm going to give you some key take home messages that really I think are key for us in general practice. So let's start by putting a bit of context around this conversation. Uh, we know that high levels of triglycerides uh, lead to uh, an increased risk of coronary heart disease and of course pancreatitis and um, omega-3 acid uh, ethyl ester uh, medications are licensed for the treatment of hypertriglyceridemia uh, that hasn't uh, responded to, to diet uh, alone or uh, of course, if the level of triglycerides uh, are really high. Uh, now, um, I think uh, it's really important to note that uh, there have been some systemic reviews, uh, some systematic reviews, and uh, also some meta-analyses uh, of randomized controlled trials uh, that have really suggested a dose-dependent increased risk of atrial fibrillation uh, in patients uh, with established cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular risk factors uh, if taking um, omega-3 acid uh, ethyl ester medicines. Now uh, that's compared to placebo. Uh, now this uh, looked at uh, over uh, 80,000 patients, so it's a, it's a relatively large sample size um, uh, that can be uh, generalized to the population that we're serving uh, in general practice, and I think that's really key. So, as a result of this, um, atrial fibrillation has now been uh, uh, stated as a common adverse reaction. That's uh, up to one in 10 people uh, 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 that are taking uh, these types of medications. The advice uh, for our patients should be that if they are taking these medications and they get any symptoms that are in keeping with atrial fibrillation, so things like palpitations, dizziness, shortness of breath or tiredness, uh, that they should seek medical attention. And if people uh, on these medications are uh, then found to have atrial fibrillation, then we should be permanently discontinuing these medications. And the risk uh, is uh, highest at a dose of four grams per day. Now, I think of importance here is just a reminder to us all uh, to use the yellow uh, drug card scheme um, when we uh, suspect any adverse drug reactions. Now, because the MHRA doesn't regulate um, uh, dietary um, or, or uh, food supplements, um, uh, this guidance doesn't apply to people taking uh, dietary omega-3 supplements. So really, I think here in summary, uh, I think what we need to take away from this guidance is that there is a uh, dose-dependent uh, increased risk of atrial fibrillation uh, for people with established cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular risk factors uh, when taking omega-3 acid uh, ethyl ester medicines. So I hope you found uh, this video useful and please do continue to tune into GP Notebook TV for further videos. Thank you.